If you ask a parent, they might call it intuitive. If you ask a musician, they might call it inspiring. To a doctor, it's groundbreaking. To a CEO, it's powerful. To a teacher, it's the future. If you ask a child, she might call it magic. And if you asked us, we'd say it's just getting started. Okay, so we will discuss the key comments and what it is. We will go into um, the very types of e commerce and how it has changed today's business. And we will also talk about e commerce and then we will talk about payment systems, especially mobile payment systems. Then in the next session, we will talk about and we will revise general information of what we have done so far. And um, what is necessary for them to know exams? Yes, um, the gentleman, the scientific work, the kind of work, we talked to him about that. Oh, oh so I need to get some more work to go to the hospital. Like, it's just one time. It's not for Dr. Mensah. No, Dr. Mensah is giving you the quizzes. The quizzes. And then the project. That is easy to do our work. The group was actually coming from the project. I didn't know. Thank you. Uh, so you will send the answer. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> You are not setting yourselves, but you are both different parts. Actually, what is, and I are handling the research paper, but he will talk about it in this class, and then uh, we will mark it together. So it's going to be a research. I actually just give you um, a sample of how I ask my research questions, the research paper. So he's looking at it. He's also doing something together. You are supposed to write a research paper, so you can talk to you, through what is the best way to do. So don't worry so much. Let me focus on what I'm going to do, and then what to come with my research in the exams. Okay. So, you know, what we began in the beginning of the semester, we were looking at uh, IT and how it helps us. And I asked you a very interesting question that, does everybody need to go online? Remember that question? Yes. And then I asked you that, um, considering a Ghanaian contest, should you prefer business do? Yes, it's a question that is coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, if you want to use our two minutes, that's not fine. But what I'm trying to emphasize here is the fact that uh, we began with this, and today we are going to explore whether it holds true or not. Do I, should every business be business online? Should every family do business online? Should we go have internet websites and try to sell online? That's what we're trying to sell online. Yes, correct. Yeah. 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 Why do everybody call this little friend yes or no? <laughs> 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 okay, that's how it is. So, what is e commerce? E commerce can be defined as the sharing of business information, maintaining business relationships, and conducting transactions by means of telecommunication and some more rights electronic communication and digital telecommunication. So, any form of business that enables you to share business information, maintain business relationship, and conduct business transactions over telecommunication network is called e-commerce. Now, what is different about this as compared to e-business is e-commerce has to do something which is an exchange of value, whether it's information, whether it's a business relationship, or it's a transaction. I don't know that's what I'm trying to say. So there's an exchange of value there. But when you say e-business, is the mentality when you can do business by internet or using internet to support the running of business. So even if I, I use the internet to enable uh, my employees to check their salaries online, it's e-business, it's not e-commerce. Because part, remember that HR is part of business. So if I use internet to support any aspect or function of business, 
That's a small key business that I'm going to keep in mind. This commerce is when we are doing transactions, we are doing commercial, we are doing commerce. So there's an exchange of value, business information, business relationships, and then transactions itself. So e-commerce is a subset of what? E-business. Because business also entails the exchange of value. Understand the differences very well. It's not a thing. I want to eat here, you want me to come. Now, here. I'll take it easy. Hi. Take it easy. Somebody says, I'm going to come here. Hey, so then you come with me. Great. Sharing of business information. Maintaining your business relationship, conducting your transaction. E-commerce is electronic commerce. So when you drop the word electronic, it means that there should be a commercial activity taking place. And every commercial activity entails the exchange of value. It can be information, it can be a relationship, or it can be a transaction. So I'm saying that e-commerce has to be deal with what? Exchange of value. E-business is electronic business. That means that the business or a part of it or the full business is being empowered by telecommunication business. Electronic commerce. Anything about anything you see has to do with electronic research. And, and most often than not, we, the word electronic connotes the um, internet or telecommunication platform, electronic communication platform. So, if somebody says M commerce, what is it? M commerce. M commerce. M commerce. No more Guys, it's more of that. It's not, it's not, it's mobile commerce. It's not, um, market <laughs> So that means it is what? The sharing of business information, maintaining of business relationships, conducting of business transactions, by what? Mobile. By, by what? Mobile. Yes. 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 So M-commerce has to do with what? The issue of the information using communicate, using mobile networks.
when we had an introduction and, and much more proliferation of IT. So people are applying IT to businesses and thinking about using internet applications or um, electronic communication networks to empower the business. So since then, it has increased and increased and increased. But around 2000, we had a problem, a challenge with um, those who remember the uh, y 2 And we have a, 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 an adage we say in technological environments about um, the dot com failure. What happened is that many of the businesses that were running around 2000 that began internet websites, most of them failed out. There's an initial search of people liking the websites and also going to those websites to do business. But most of the businesses will not understand or have a very good business um, model to survive on the internet. Because one thing about the internet is that it increases your reach and also increases your competition. Because the entry barriers for somebody to start a similar business on yours is relatively low. You can sit in your room and post something on Facebook. And you can see accident issues. Now there's people something on Facebook. And then you can even delete their phone number and you can call them. Currently, if you start that and you start selling there, somebody you can start it. So comparably, we have someone doing the same thing as you are doing. And people are able to copy each other. And then there is also what we call the reduced information asymmetry. Somebody knows the information, no knows. The, you see, when you're doing business, you are able to transact more because you have some information somebody doesn't have. And when you have an environment that makes the information more open, then it reduces the ability for us to compete because of information. Now, for example, if you want to sell your laptop and you go and put your laptop price, it's in 900 Ghana cities, you put it on the website. I can also go online and check out the same laptop from our different what, retailers. Now, initially, if it was a store, that was in my area, maybe that's the only store. Means I have to go to what, Accra, sometimes because of the convenience, what do I do? I just settle with a shop that is in my community and buy it from them. Not because it's the best price, but because of the convenience I'm looking for. However, the internet is the economy of scale. Now, the shop that is in Abuboshi, all those who want to put on the internet, I can get to know their prices. Then maybe you can get to know that if I should go to Accra, I can buy the same laptop you're selling 900 or 600 Ghana. So what would I do? I would for the, now if the confidence goes out, I would rather take the risk of well, selling 300 and go to Accra and come and buy it. So a number of the businesses that were competing on the internet couldn't have a unique business model. We were following others and later we ran out of steam. They couldn't survive there. And because of the dynamic nature of what the internet is. Yes, please. Yes. 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 Um, even in Ghana, you saw the, 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 the rise of... There are many reasons that fail. I was going to go to them. One are technological reasons. Two, we have market readiness, technological readiness, market readiness, policy and government readiness, and then cultural readiness. In some, now to take them one by one, in some communities, some products are not very well communicated online. So if you put the production and product there, and people want to feel the product and touch the product, in a place like Africa, it is to not sell well. It is now that you are now, if you remember those who are using the web in 95, how many video websites do you actually see? Currently, if I want to buy a phone, I can just Google it in YouTube and find the same phone, somebody do a review of it. A few years ago, before YouTube came in the 2000s, so before 2000, around 95 and 98, much more was text based and picture based. And even the speech was slow. So the, the degree to which you can virtualize or digitalize a product, which is physical, was less. Now you can do it more because you can interact with it and you can become much more open to it. So in terms of our readiness, the readiness of the market, the market at that time was not exposed to that much technologies 
for them to be able to easily access some of these things easily. A very good example is even if you could do a platform like this, how many could actually sell online? If you look at ePesua, that came, and there was another one, eMart or something like that, that time also in Accra. The point of this is that they had a catalog system, you could actually catalog and buy from them. And the challenge, the, the challenge that they had was they used to stock it and they put it on the website, but they don't stock it, they stock it just on the website and negotiate for prices. However, because when the product takes time before it gets purchased, by the time they get somebody actually going to the website and making a deal, the product will be either, either run out of maximum or um, the, the local shop or the retail fiscal shop or the price would have changed there. Hence, it costs them more because they would have invented something like, let's say, 20 Ghana cities. By the time you people start buying it, you start on your website in January, 20 Ghana cities. People, if you start getting what, um, um, visitors, people start buying in, in higher volume somewhere in March or let's say April, price would have changed. So they go to the market, now they have completely different price there, and they have to sell at that price. Then there are others too who couldn't stock in larger quantities. They will buy a few and keep it, and then they will try to sell it. And by the time they realize, people don't go in for that product. So now you have a stock that you cannot sell. Then the last thing was to deal with the uh, payment system in terms of technology. Our payment system was already so quite, uh, there were different payment strategies uh, uh, they were trying to adopt. One of them was um, cash on delivery. I hope you know that one. I deliver to you and pay. And it was not always efficient. The second one was they were trying to set up a kind of e wallet for you so that you pay something to them and can well, you deduct it from it. Some also tried their vouchers. Now, in each other way they tried, especially in Ghana, the culture was not so ready for it. There are very, very good mediums of selling the same thing. So why would an alternative ways of selling the catamaran to other things, even in front of your house? So why would someone want to go online unless you are giving the product at a cheaper price or something, maybe like partner products? So you always have to have a different incentive for attracting someone online. And sometimes you won't do it by price or bundling of products. And if price is not something you can control, especially if you're not producing, then it becomes an issue for you. So most, many of the companies who went online, even globally, were lost out because of many other interrelated reasons. One of them was the technology readiness. That sometimes you can produce a pretty technology there, you have done a good website. But how many people have got the ability to be able to browse and come to your website? That is another issue. If you don't get a volume to, you can't be selling, paying for website bills, and also managing an office, and then begin getting two or three sales in a month. It's around now. Or let's have a high end product, like cars. So those of them, those who survive, especially in Ghana, where the car retail firms who try to sell cars through email, they send you their pictures, you like it, then they ship the car and you can pick it up. In that, comparably, they were making more money in the sense that you actually like the car, you do some payment before they ship the car down. So they could commit the person. And even that, there are others who have a challenge that um, they used to buy on behalf of their friends. They buy it, they bring it down. When the car gets here, the guy says that, okay, I'll pay in, in installments. You want to you put your, a whole lot of cash into it, and maybe you could, well, the cash could buy three cars at that time. So if you are saying that they are paying installments, you don't have enough money to go for the second consignment. So that is how it was influencing them. The last one I had to do, one of the other points that I mentioned was cultural readiness. The fact that sometimes the culture is not ready for that type of transaction. Up to now, we are very interpersonal. We believe in somebody sitting and telling you about the product more than buying the product online. It's just a few, a few of the late generation, those who are born in the late 70s up to now, who grew up with the internet, who are a little bit e-inclined. When I say e-inclined, they are internet inclined. So they kind of have a belief and trust the internet much more than um, the older generation, who were born before the 75 and 76. They are now still um, accustomed to the traditional way of doing business, where you sign a check and give to somebody or make a payment in person. So because those who are more 
later on, and beyond seven, seven canon now, as the millennials, they grew up in the internet and they experienced it globally. You see that those people are people, children who spend more time on sale, on, on, on the internet. They buy and they believe in it. Yeah. As compared to the generation that we have um, previously. Now, one of the unique, the unique features of, the, of a platform like e commerce technologies is the first one, the ubiquity. The fact that it gives you everywhere, anywhere access. So far as there is the internet, I don't believe that if you go to my village and there's no internet, you don't have anywhere access. But these technologies, combining mobile platforms and then um, internet platforms running on computers, you have a very interesting way of connecting anywhere, anytime. Currently, you can be able to access your watch, your Facebook page on your phone, and at the same time on your computer. So at any time, anywhere, if you have a phone that's enabled with those features, let them lock here 100 and see lying there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not the, the, all the phones are able to give us that kind of features, but the idea is that it's only the present. Uh, it's everywhere. All places you can have it. Then you can have global reach. And the fact that it crosses boundaries. And I gave you an example in my first lecture about each unit. That company that allows you, allows you to buy contract products like cows and sheep online. And the cow and sheep is what? I don't know whether anybody has visited the site yet. It's your gift Always have a, if you have a chance, this is their website. And you could actually buy the product whilst you are living in the US. You can buy the car or a sheep for your parents in Ethiopia and you deliver to them. If you want it for yourself in the country, that one, I don't know how you get it. But you can give that to you. So you can cross national boundaries. And also, that asks, asks, brings us to question that. When you pay taxes. Yeah, when you pay taxes. Now that our internal revenue service is getting reformed and you come and you come to understand IT very well. It should be a big internet tax, I hope so. My mm. question is that who will police it? <laughs> well the current the current GC the current new police that one that the full police internet tax. <laughs> that would be best story. Okay. Richness, richness of information. There's rich and richness. Richness means that the information that is being communicated is richer. There is more. Now, there is something called the linear richness theory. What it talks about is if you have more diverse medium of communicating information beyond just um, um, a, a single medium like text, it increases the understanding of the person who is receiving the information. For example, if I say a textbook to you, just a textbook, just with the writings in it, it will, you will read and you will understand. However, if I send you with the visual pictures in it, it will give, it may increase your understanding. If I send you with beyond art pictures, text, and add video to it, it can give you a different experience. Now, as you add more mediums of communication, there, there is richer experience that the user is sitting down on the other side having the ability. The ability for you to do that increases the potential for you to convince the user to be able to buy into your purchase. So the richer the information, the more convinced I am. If I'm selling a car to you and all I'm doing to say say to my mouth, all you tell me that you let the car come then we'll see. How do I say what you However, if I go to a little bit of extent and I show you pictures of the car, the car boot, the front part, how it look like, and I show you the bill of lending that has been signed, the same car is on the side dimensions, and then I put on the ship that is coming. You will not convince of giving me a bad payment, ask that me just, I just showing up and then discussing with you. So we have virtual information on a platform like the internet. However, you have a richer information and the ability to deliver that richer information does not mean that your consumers will have the devices to access richer information. Some consumers can only buy Nokia 100. If you do what media text messaging to them, it will not help. Some consumers to their radio will catch only AM. 
It will not go to you. Or even the earth of you. I see somebody that they don't go beyond the hundreds. They are just between the eight states and the hundreds. So the last thing she gets is draw of them all. I think that, okay. Okay, of them. Then the last one you get here is what? Atlantis. Yeah, so why I felt that when the white guys are all the other ones, it's something beyond you. You can't get it. And it's not because it's not, you know, they are taking Taiwan's nowadays. It's not a big Taiwan. They want to rewind. And you see, the bank cannot move beyond that. You must see Taiwan. Oh, I'm surprised. Yeah. They don't want to rewind between some few. I'm ready. I think that's all that's good. I think that's all that's good. That works. Let them go beyond some numbers before. Yeah. They also have some um, they only could go in between um, some specific frequencies anyway. Yes, sir. Um, I said in the second session we'll talk about what you come here as a doctor. Because I was asked whether you need to I mean use these particular words in the painting, but this richness, how is it going to be there? Global richness in the painting can find it. Okay, okay. Um, you see, richness is not just about multimedia, it's about the communication of the content. The content is richer, it's more visualized on a person receiving it. If you say multimedia, you are moving more into the type of communication, or, but it depends on how you use the sentence. For example, if you say that um, the internet allows you to communicate information in a multimedia format, so it is richer or it is much more convincing for the consumer, I will understand you. However, if you just come and write multimedia and just leave it like that, uh, multimedia, is it the uh, station or the, the radio? And I have no much. Now, what is the difference from being everywhere in the world? I've extended my reach that I can be, I can reach you, but that doesn't mean that I am here. I hope that's what I'm going to say. So I can reach to a geographical country and take my business to start selling in the northern region of Ghana. But that doesn't mean that I have a presence in Sudan. But the internet enables me to have a presence everywhere so far as the person has the internet. I hope that that's what I'm Or a mobile phone will help me to reach everywhere so far as the mobile phone covers that particular geographical location. So the limitation lies in the technology in terms of both of them, anyway. But sometimes, to tell you the truth, rich can also be decided by your strategy. You have the technology to reach Kumasi, but why would you want to go to a book or and do your business and before you go to Kumasi? Because there may be some strategic reasons. So, rich does not necessarily mean that the technology has also been able to get strategically, you may not want to go there. Then you can also strategically want to go there, but you don't have the technology to reach there. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. You, um, the first one has to do much more with the technology allowing you to be everywhere. Those who understand the taxi question, so the rest of the class, are you confused? No. Are <laughs> you understand what I do? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he has answered your questions. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> So we have interactivity, how it enables us to interact with the, the user. Then I think I end up in training. Sorry. What is it? I don't know. Okay. So but the part has been uh, discussed, so you can actually read in your book. But if you don't see it on my slide, it doesn't mean that I'm free to come. So you don't have to continue. I'm sorry, maybe my number. I should go back to my first. It's richness to interactivity. Now, if somebody says that yes, it's my number, because from richness you go to interactivity. Okay. So interactivity, the technology enables us to have a very good interaction with the user. Some of you see it always all the time when you are chatting online, interacting with people. Some websites now have online chats for specific, you can chat with the salesperson. 
we put it there, like if you want to chat with a nice person, you can chat with them. And then information density, the vast increase in information density, that's the total amount of quality information available to all market participants. A very good example is how the banking websites used to be in um, um, early 2000 and as compared to now. Most of the banking websites at that time were just very informative. They just tell you about these banking products and this is what they are and this is what you do. Currently, many banking websites have gone about that. Cow Bank, you can now download forms to fill an application, open application. You can actually get to know about products and read more about them. Some of them even give you go to give you online banking. The car bank, I think they have comments that you can even do that with the broker section. You can, if you have a brokerage account with them, you can see, go online and manage and trade yourself. So we have much more information being really given to market participants. I hope you understand what brand is. And it's, it's not just because we couldn't do it in the past. Right now, we have one, we have companies have more understanding of what IT plays in the company. For example, in 2007, I was in 2007 years, 2006, I was interviewing someone and a bank money, uh, a company in the industrial area. And that company had designed a website. It was a one of the bank companies, not in Tampas, so the rest. And the finance manager asked me, do you have a website? He said, yeah, you have a website. And a lot of things going like that. He was talking about a flash, just standing on the screen. I said he gave it to his friend to, do, to design it for him. And I asked him that, so what's the website address? He couldn't remember the website address, but he could remember his email. And I said, since we designed and paid, I've not even been there before. <laughs> so at that time, he could, I was talking to the manager of Africa Online. He was saying that Ghanaians are more interested in the email than on the website. So some people buy domain names and just create email address. So in case you own a company, maybe. Uh, and it's just like Kujo and Sans. You rather go and buy a domain kujoensans.com and then you start doing Kwani at Kujo and Sans, the PR at Kujo and Sans. Much more than you designing a website. Because they believe that the email was a direct transaction with somebody abroad that they want to deal with. After the website, it's more about reputation. So currently, that's very important. Even the design is, after the first time design, at least in five years' time. That is how you see. And I don't, I don't. Um, I don't challenge them. Is it one of the reasons why this is happening is because we have a poor understanding of the strategic value of the information system. Two, our view of the world of business is about relationships. So anything that will enable you to have relationships, email will help you to have a relationship with the trading partner. Telephone will help you. Website, who? You can't actually tell. People will rush to that. That is why even some companies are rushing to Facebook. More of a relationship than rather having their website. Because we feel that my consumers are there. I can interact with their customer service. I can extend it there. But website, I don't even know who visited the website. Nobody's giving me statistics. What does it mean? How many, who visited, which, which country did you visit from? That's an issue. So we are encouraged to be able to explore more beyond just information density. Now, technology also permits modification and personalization. Like, uh, I thought you were bringing me one. I'm just worried you don't worry. I, I thought, you don't have enough ladies. No. <laughs> this is, I'm used to that. Okay. I went to the art class, they said I have to be booked, and I bring that one. <laughs> anyway. So, personalization and customization. One thing that the technology allows you to do is to personalize information on how you want to see the information interacted with. And some websites do that. And then even integrate it with more content through social network technologies so that you can be able to have a better personalization, even have your own type of adverts. There are some websites that if you like what like YouTube and then other advertising websites, and when videos are recommended for you, if you don't like them, you can mute them or you can build the link so it doesn't show your preferences anymore. The reason why they're doing that, they want to make sure that you are you like those ones. There's a website in the US called Hulu.com, and it's also a video website, but it's more, it shows videos, um, current videos of what is being shown on TV in the US. So it's quite not available in many other countries apart from the US. 
Now, what is interesting about that website? When I get start, you just put a good Is this advert useful to you? Do you want to see more adverts by like this? If it's not useful to you, can get more. So that they will show you another different advert. Now, they are, what, is, what are they trying to do is that they want to make sure that they are communicating with the consumer. Sometimes they can even ask you, do you want to watch all the adverts in one block before you watch the movie? Or uh, you want it intermittent that after every 15 minutes an advert will come? Because some people don't like it when you have to pause the 30-second advert. So they put all the 30-second adverts together, you watch all of them, and then the movie will start. Sorry. Yes, that's the idea. That's the idea. But I think it's not just about that. They also want to make sure that they are giving consumers more power. To some extent, it will even make the consumer more happy to choose the kind of adverts you like to watch. Because I know people who actually just watch adverts. They spend time just watching adverts. They like it. They like adverts. They, different. they can tell you what you want to this advert. And maybe it might not be very common in Ghana because sometimes our adverts are really boring. You don't even get a point. But some adverts in other places are quite interesting. People really want to watch it. They really want to they spend much time trying to watch it and much more than others who don't want to watch it. So the, the use of personalization is actually amplified by social platforms or social networking websites or social community websites. So the um, um, what the internet does, or e-commerce also gives us, is we can also integrate social platforms like that into what? Into our buying, selling, or our transactional process in our businesses online. Now, one of the reasons why it's become uh, important for us to look at the internet and its value to business this way is because of the fact that the millennials who dominate today's uh, internet users have got sophisticated needs. They have got short attention spans and they have got sophisticated needs. It is very difficult for you to satisfy today's generation of children or who are growing up, especially those who grow up the internet from the late 70s up to today. When the person is sitting at home, take it, you know it, whilst he's watching TV, at the same time his mobile phone is they is chatting with someone. At the same time, the laptop is on his lap, and they are talking about three pages, Joy FM, and Facebook, and something like YouTube, and maybe Twitter. He's doing all these things at the same time. Then the radio is in the background, he's listening to Batman. Now, all of these things, <laughs> you know Batman? <laughs> Some of you, she's a millennial, so she can't discuss it. Batman. <laughs> so, how many people know Batman? You don't know Batman. Oh, you don't know Batman. You know Batman is from OK. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Those guys who between is it four thirty and five, they still tell you about things that are going on in Ghana by much more than just him. But he's not available for himself. Yes, sir. Or see him in some cases. But there are two other guys who come and they do those things. But they tell you about the real news that are going on in the country. It is like the guy who used to be on Gold FM. What's his name? Yeah, Gold FM. Yes, my guy. But I don't think people listen to it. You listen to it. You are, you listen to it. Uh, yes, you can listen to it. I can listen to it. Those kind of people, they want to listen to it. Yeah, listen to that man. At least I want to know what's going on in the country. Anyway. It's called Bamiyan. How do you? So, what I was trying to point out is that today's consumer is very sophisticated. Even if you go to the consumer's room, the gadgets that you see, that same person opens his bag, iPad is coming out, phone is coming out, phones, two phones. There is uh, almost in different brands, all of them coming out at the same time. And then his laptop, there's a laptop he's has in his bag. There's another laptop on his desk in the office. There's a laptop to at home. Oh, no, there are people who have that. 
and they keep on using all these platforms and technologies. So we, we tell that as an increasing sophistication of the consumer. Consumer is now very sophisticated. Then we also want uh, information everywhere and anywhere, every time. So we want to buy, by having a few hundred to download, every five minutes you are looking at your phone, at the airport you are looking at your phone, and wherever you are, you are looking at your phone. How many, not quite a number of people, you carry your phone to your back, there's a lot They put it there. Some of you have lost phones by falling into water, falling into <laughs> I don't know, they pretend it's true. They put it here, but I can't realize that we stay in a place and we post the videos. So they can find that we eat some things. So they say, why do you eat and you charge me this? So, everywhere and anywhere, then there's an essential need to connect. Mm. The fact that the phone is there, look at what this guy has done. The phone could have been covered, he has opened the phone, it's lying there, so that if I had to call him home, he could have been there. This is a very good example. And some of you too, even if the car has come, you know you have put on vibrate in here, but still, after everybody, you look at it. There is something to my opinion. So, it's there, you are expecting something. Is that yes? So that's how it is. So always, that is such a good thing to be connected. Some of you put it by your bedside. You should take a, a new phone. Maybe when I get home, I just switch. Put on silent now. Uh, is it? No, not, not very rich. Yeah, there's another one. I'm gonna fill up. And I just leave it. Because if you leave it on, you get a lot of calls. Sometimes it's stressful. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> the other is this way. You know, 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 And people who could have waited for the thing to be scanned the next morning at the office still want to call the evening and tell you the same issue that you tell you in the morning. <laughs> Some of you, when you are sleeping, you will sleep very soundly. That's why. But if your mind is always thinking about money, where is the big money coming from? Capitalists, you don't want to increase the cost. Anyway, so there's an essential don't need to be connected, and this is everywhere. So we have an environment that, if we had to meet the needs of these people, we have to become very smart. The type of consumer, I'm not issue market, if I look at issue internet market, I'm not talking to this. The type of consumer that is characterized by the three factors I put there is called the consumer. The proactive consumer. He goes out there and protects himself. If you're not going to get to him, he gets to himself. Those consumers are very different. I mean, how did you call, you know, today's generation, let me ask you a question. How did you call some like customer service and the guy you know more than what the person is telling you? About their own products. Sometimes you can see an animal that you call maybe Etsy and you are discussing them. He has no idea about the product or about when it was released. That thing. Yes. The promotion. And you need to know that it's not available. <laughs> and you have to carry that evidence to actually show them. So we, we have that challenge here that today's consumer are more proactive. So if you are going to just be a passive businessman or business and not interact with them and not reach out to them, they will move on to the one who will respond to them better. There are three concepts in e-commerce that we should uh, take note of. Uh, first of all, information asymmetry. When I was saying that it reduces information asymmetry, the cost acquired by insufficient information in the marketplace. 
that you are going to a transaction, you don't have sufficient information about your buyer, about your seller. So it reduces, why well, does it reduce it? It gives you opportunity to research and find information about the product you are going to buy more than the previous time when you didn't know about it. So if I was going to buy a bag of tomatoes for you, and you are going to sell it to me, and I just get a call, or I call my friend who is in the market and the person tells me the bag of tomatoes, how much is selling. If you give me a really higher price, I can negotiate better with you because I know what the, what the, the market price is. So I can even think about the fact that if the market price is 5 Ghana, and you are selling to me at 15 Ghana, I can say, ah, of course, at least I'll pay 6 or 7. Thinking about your, um, your transportation, but this 15 is way out of yours. And you can point it, if I go to where you want it from, I know you want it at 5. Then the person finds himself wanting, he wants, oh, you know, you know, you know, we know. <laughs> so there is a search cost. The cost of searching for the product or searching for buyers and sellers to come and deal with the product. And the transaction cost, which combines the two of them above, above the, the search cost, the asymmetry cost, and also um, the market participation cost. That's in the transaction cost. If the cost of you participating in the market you finding your sellers, you finding your buyers, and also act, making sure that they stick to the, um, the negotiations that you set up with them. We call them an act of motivation cost. That if you negotiate something with someone, the person being able to stick it, stick to it, and then fulfill it. Because you can actually get a product, you can get somebody to like them, like the product, but at the end of the day, what will happen is that the person may not Stick to it. You may go and talk to somebody else and move on and not buy yours. So we sometimes have that cost in the actor motivation cost. That actors are not motivated in the transaction anymore. And this may be called by delays, can be called by insufficient information, or can be called by too much information. The guy becomes what knows a lot now and he now is more informed. The digital markets also enable different types of market processes. One is price discrimination. Price discrimination. The other is dynamic price, and the last one is disintermediation. Now with dynamic pricing, you can be able to choose products and sell it to different people at different prices, looking at what they want and their frequent, their most likely choices. For example, many companies try to bundle products, and as at a point in time, as you are going to their website, they change the products to suit you. So they have realized that you want to look at laptop bag, after that you want to look at a laptop, and all of a sudden they start laptop bag and the laptop. Buy the two at seven hundred dollars. Go up to the laptop is seven hundred dollars, and the laptop bag is maybe uh, fifty uh, twenty dollars. And then they will tell you that buy the two at seven hundred dollars, meaning that they are throwing the laptop for you. However, they know the original price of the laptop was maybe six fifty, so they will still make these all, all all the same. And it happens a lot in a place like Amazon. What you, your, the, the bundle product you may buy, you may not get the same thing as an app person buy, depending on the time the person is browsing, the time is browsing, the type of things you have been choosing in browsing. They will just bundle the products in a different way to suit the type of person who is browsing. So they watch your, your that, sometimes they tell you, those who bought this also bought that. And the funny thing is, if you went to the same website and you went there to click on, okay, I want a bag. I want a laptop. And you just put it in the codes and you want you can purchase it at 700 plus things. However, once you are browsing, they can just throw it in and tell you I'm getting two at a cheaper price. <coughs> so in a, in, a, in a dynamic manner, they can change it. Then there are those also who compete and then challenge others with prices. And that can lead to what we call um, what others will tell as part of price discrimination. Companies like Tesla can challenge another company like um, Asta in the U UK. These are both uh, companies which are to do, who do retail online. 
And they put the product there and keep like this is how sales be sell it. This is how it sells it. And this is our price. So you are comparing at that point in time that particular product. If convince that particular company, sometimes they even do address against each other. And then we are not very friendly in our marketplace because of competition to do that. Uh, what else do they do that? They are not directly at some point. No, but they write MTN there. And that's the best. Sometimes they And they tell you that they are better than MTN. Okay, I won't be surprised. Being a UK one company, which is now global, it's possible to do that. But you don't see Kanye doing it among themselves. No. They are good. So why don't they make an alternative or substitute products? But pick on someone. And in the US, they can pick on an article that they can cover insurance company, who perform an insurance company, run through all the services and get the white strong group. And then give them their offer. Yes. The floor was I just understand it better than us. But I think it's also because of the type of competition in the market setting. Some companies fight on one case, another case, they are collaborating as their brothers. Well, we, we, we don't know how to do the same thing here. But they know how they do it a lot. Microsoft will sue one company in the country, another country, they will share the same resources, sometimes the same building. And it's because they don't see the way they do their businesses. They see their, their business product lines and their geographical locations as different. So whatever that will maximize profit in a different country, they will try to do it. Whether it's by even buying out or buying into your company and collaborating with them. Why do you think that Microsoft about two years ago offered to buy Yahoo? So that it can become stronger to fight what Google. And sometimes Microsoft is collaborating with Apple just to fight Google. And sometimes Apple is collaborating with Google to fight Microsoft. With the Google Maps, Apple collaborated with Google. So you see it on all the iPhones. And did it very well. Microsoft has some maps that is not really up to what Google has. But my, the same Apple is also collaborating with Microsoft and developing um, the Windows web package, or Microsoft package, Office package for the uh, Apple platform. And you will know sometimes the current developments in the Office package that you see, Office 2007-2010, is actually based on the kind of form and structure of how um, just the design layout of how the map version was looking like in 2004. Anybody who uses the very old uh, Windows uh, Office 2003 and Mac 2004 will see a superior technology and interface design in the Mac 1. Now, when they moved on to Office 2007, they adopted the idea. So sometimes if you can't see that companies are collaborating on one side, but they are catching up and not collaborating on another. One. Now, with this intermediation, what we end up having is, for example, if a product is being sold in a marketplace, and the cost of production and my cost as a manufacturer, I'm selling at what twenty dollars to the customer. As soon as I start putting intermediaries in the value chain, what happens? I increase the cost. And pass it all to the consumer. So the ability of a firm to reduce the intermediaries within the value chain so the product gets to the consumer or the customer through shorter value, uh, shorter process is going to end up increasing the value they give or a better value to the customer. And it's happening here. You can see what's happening with the retailers and the distributor. Anybody that you add onto the value chain has for more cost to the consumer. That's why companies are now doing their best to be able to sell directly to consumers because you get it cheaper. I don't know whether any of you who travel ever visited what we call a factory outlet, like Nike fa factory outlet or Adidas factory outlet or even Dell factory outlet. A factory outlet is where they sell the computers at factory prices directly there. 
is what you sometimes we say distributor price in Ghana. So I know Ghanaians who were when, when, when by those times I was there, you remember they should call shocks. Yeah, those shocks. This guy would go to the factory and tell his friends to want them in Ghana. So you go and buy them around 40 pounds, 40 pounds, 40 pounds, 40 pounds. What did it cost about 80, 90 in the shops? Even the night shops.